Let's start a new topic, which we've actually kind of seen before, but haven't written down much. Uh, it's called Differential Equations. Up until now, we've been playing the game of, uh, given a data set, find the derivative point by point using forward difference quotient, backward difference quotient, central difference quotient. Or given a formula, estimate the derivative. That's what we did when we were first learning about derivatives. And again, we used forward difference quotient, etc. there. Then once we learned to do the power rule, the uh, sines and cosine derivative formulas, we were playing the game of given a formula, find a formula for the derivative. And there's the product rule, quotient rule, chain rule, etc. Today we're going to think backwards and say, what if we know the derivative? Can we find some numeric version of the original function? Probably not a formula for it, but at least kind of some data points about it. Um, and we're going to use a method called Euler's method, and it's uh, ancient, as they say, um, actually a few hundred years old. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the movie Hidden Figures. Uh, I really love that movie. It's my kid's favorite movie, at least some of them, uh, my eight-year-old daughter in particular. Um, and I'll leave a link in the description of this video to um, the, the pivotal Euler's method scene. I hate to be a, scene, a uh, spoiler for the movie, at least in the math sense. Um, so let's think of what's our calculus prediction equation. How do I predict a new value? Do you remember what this was? It was basically the old value, or the, you could say the current value, plus the change amount. And what's another way of writing the change amount? It's rate of change times how long things had to change. So the change amount was equal to the rate of change times delta t. Or uh, if we want to put function labels on it, we could say f now equals f previous plus f prime previous times, you could say delta t, or you could say now minus previous times. Or uh, that's saying what's now based on what used to be. Or you could say f new equals f current plus f prime current times um, new minus current. These are all basically the same thing, and hopefully you're kind of seeing the tangent line formula in these as well. Not a, not a coincidence. So let's apply this to a fairly straightforward case, and then we'll get fancy. Uh, here we go. Um, let's say there's some kind of a flood, and the, lo the waters are three feet high and rising. As the song goes. Um, and let's say they're rising at 0.2 feet per hour. So uh, what will the water level be in two hours? So we'll go ahead and calculate that. Hopefully you get um, that the new value equals the old value plus rate of change times delta t. So we get new equals old, which is 3 feet high, rate of change, which is 0.2 feet per hour, and delta t is 2 hours. That way the hours cancels the hours, you get feet, you add those to feet, and you get a grand total of 3.4 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the interesting part says, let's suppose that the forecast is that in two hours from when we started, the floodwaters will be rising at a, a rate of 1.15 feet per hour.
And then we could ask, what will the water level be two hours from that point? So old was time zero, our new here is time two, and we want to know what will the flood water level be in at time four. Well, again, we can say new. Now this is at time four, where this was at time two before, and this was at uh, time zero. New, well, now instead of using three feet, I'm going to use the updated version. So it'll be 3.4 plus the new rate of change times the new delta t, which is still two hours. So you'd get, um, well, whatever that is, the arithmetic isn't important. I guess it would be 3.7. Um, so that would be the value at time four. And then you could say, OK, and then how about another two hours from then, or one hour from then? Um, so you could repeat as long as you have information about what the forecast is saying. So here we're given rates of change, 0.2 feet per hour, 0.15 feet per hour, and we're using those to get values of what we think the flood will be at, starting at 3, then 3.4, then 3.7. So we're getting values of f based on values of f prime and delta t. So here we haven't said how the forecast is working. Um, there's probably all kinds of interesting geology going on there. Um, but our next example uh, will talk about how the rate of change can depend on the amount of stuff itself. F prime can depend on F.